Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. A lot of you know I sell this product on my website. It's called Lube Shuttle. It's a grease gun where you thread in the canisters. When it's time to change canisters, you just push a little grease up and put that in and then thread it in and you're good to go. It's a great product. But because I sell this product and endorse it, a lot of people think I'm an expert on grease. And I'm really not. They'll ask me, what type of grease should I get for my equipment? Well, I know someone who is an expert. His name is Wes. He's the president of AET Systems Incorporated, the parent company of Lube Shuttle. And I caught up with him at a farm show and asked him to tell us what we need to know when we're selecting a type of grease. He told me 12 things that you probably need to know when you're picking out grease for your equipment. Let's watch. Grease is made to weep out oil and you have a thickener in there so you take when we make grease we take a base oil and we add a thickener like lithium or calcium or polyurea and the viscosity of that initial base oil we take that's going to be the base oil that weeps out so that's you know in simple terms you can think of it as like a 5w30 an engine oil that consistency of oil that's going to come out or for a heavier machine we might use like a, a very heavy oil that might think of like a 90 weight oil or like a gear oil that's going to come out And there's a number. I mean, if you look at what we would have available worldwide, there'd be 34 different kinds of grease. And most of those are going to be specialty products. But even when you go into a store, you're looking at probably a dozen brands with a few different grades or types of grease at the store. And you're going to feel probably intimidated. And there's a few simple things that we can tell you that you're going to be able to eliminate a lot of those greases. And especially if you own a compact tractor or a mower, there's maybe one or two greases you should be looking at. You can, you can forget the rest of them. It's just as, as easy as looking at the label and you can start saying, no, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that. So when you're looking at like a, a compact tractor, you're gonna have pins and bushings. You should probably be looking at a base oil viscosity of 100 centistokes to 200 centistokes. And the pins and bushings in there are small. There's not a ton of wear or a ton of pressure. When we get up to, say, a, an 80 ton rigid frame mine truck, we're going to be using a 450 to a 550 base oil that's really thick. And you don't want to use a really thick base oil on a small machine because it just creates extra friction. And it's going to take more power to get that bearing to turn, or you know, it's not going to provide the proper lubrication. It might not work around a pin that doesn't have a lot of pressure on it. is this grease going to get pushed out of a, a pin or, or, or bushing? And if it has a high shear strength, it's going to stay adhesive to that steel and stay in that joint. One indicator where you probably should get a better grease is if you're going out to your tractor and you're seeing long streaks of grease that's running onto your pins and bushings, that's probably telling you that your, your grease isn't very stable, the grease that you're using. So in that case, I would go and, and look for a little better grade of grease. And I'm not saying you have to go and find a, a full synthetic grease, that's going to be a very expensive grease. You can still be looking at a mineral base grease with a lithium complex or a lithium base grease. I, I grew up on a farm as well, and I would say we had a very typical approach to greasing. When times were tough, you used the cheapest grease you could find. And then when you were feeling a little bit better about farming, you bought, you know, the three, four, five dollar tube grease. And the difference in them is going to be the additives that are in the grease. So when you have a, a very cheap grease, you're not going to have corrosion inhibitors, you might not have um, oxidation stabilizers or different things like that. And those are things you're going to want. I mean, especially if that piece of equipment isn't getting used often or it's going to be sitting for a while, the more protection you can offer it, the better off you're going to be. On a mower, you don't need a $12 tube of grease. Um, but you still, <clears throat> in my opinion, excuse me, you still want uh, a good string of additives in that grease so you have corrosion protection and oxidation protection. Most of the greases when you go into the store are going to say lithium on them and that refers to the thickener that's in the grease. Lithium is one of the best all-purpose types of greases you can get and there's different grades of lithium. So if I was say going to, to grease a mower, I would look, go to the store and look for a lithium grease that's probably three, four dollars a tube. It should say on the box, you know, um, anti-corrosion or you know, water resistant, because I think that's important. If it's if it's gonna, if your machine's gonna sit outside and it's gonna get rained on, 
you don't want that, that grease to wash out. And if that grease washes out and you don't have a corrosion inhibitor in the grease, you're gonna get rust. And that's where your, bailing, or your, your, your bearing's gonna fail or your bushing's gonna go out. And you get a lot of, of farmers out there, especially that wanna use a molly grease. Molly is great for pins and bushings. It's not a great wheel bearing grease, typically. So like on a, on a hay baler or um, even a, like a skid loader. A skid loader, you have a lot of bearings that are taking a lot of pressure back and forth, pins, bushings, where they're gonna be getting a lot of work, especially in a con uh, construction setting. And that's where you're gonna wanna see a, a molly grease, three to 5% molly grease with a lithium base. The last couple years has been a big push on polyurea grease. And, and polyurea base grease is a great grease. We use it a lot in sealed for life bearings because it is a, a very thermally stable product. It's oxidatively stable. It weeps out oil at a very consistent pace, but it's not compatible with any other grease. And when we say it's not compatible, we don't mean that it's gonna create a, an acid or something and, and cause wear. What it's gonna do, like if you mix a polyurea grease with a, a number two lithium grease, then you'd have a situation where that polyurea is gonna dry out that lithium and you might not get the greatest amount of protection, you might get very limited protection. And if there's a grease you don't like and you decide to switch to a polyurea grease, grease more often to get that polyurea grease worked into the system and make sure you're getting ample protection and lubrication. With a compact tractor, um, in my opinion, you're not gonna be required to use a full synthetic grease. Um, full synthetic greases are great in high speed bearings, spindle bearings, um, and different things like that that have really tight tolerances or, or temperature restrictions. And on a compact tractor, you're just not gonna have that requirement. Um, and when you get to a round baler and you look at that machine, there are shafts turning everywhere. And those are gonna be a lot of high speed bearings. And in that case, you're worried about two things, temperature and the speed of that bearing. So in that case, you're probably gonna wanna switch. I know a lot of balers call for a full synthetic grease. And what full synthetic grease does, it, it stays a lot more consistent and how it weeps out oil and gives lubrication. So your bearing's gonna be running at a, a lesser temperature for a longer period of time. So anytime you're switching grease, I mean, make sure you're staying one with what the owner manual is telling you. And then two, you don't wanna be going like, oh, I bought a, a lithium grease today, I got a lithium grease tomorrow, and then polyurea and, and back and forth. You wanna stay pretty consistent with what you're using. If your weather isn't terribly cold, if you're on a, on a pretty consistent level, some just say 40 degrees Fahrenheit up to 100, you probably don't have to worry about the type of grease you're using year or month to month or summer to winter. In Wisconsin, we do worry because in winter we use a thinner grease so we can actually pump it through the grease lines, through the grease cirques, and that it's thin enough that it works around that pin when it's 40 below zero. If your temperature fluctuation isn't, isn't super huge like that, you can buy one grease and stick with it for the, for the year. You know, in Wisconsin, the, the dairy cow still gotta eat, so that skid steer is gonna get used every day, and they're probably not gonna wanna grease it when it's 40 below, but when they have to, they need a grease that gets in there. And down south, you don't have that worry. The most important thing in greasing is greasing. What he's saying there is it's more important to grease on a regular basis probably than it is the type of grease that you use. I've been in the farm equipment business for 25 years and many times I'll see a technician working on a major failure and he'll say the reason this happened was the person that owned the equipment did not know what a grease gun was. In other words, they never greased it. I've never yet heard anybody say they used the wrong type of grease. So regular greasings will make your equipment last a lot longer. If you'd like to order the Lube Shuttle system, it's available on my website. We have four types of greases there that are all compatible with small equipment. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, click the My Face icon and click the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. And if you'd like to see a video on Lube Shuttle, look right here. Thanks for watching.